and welcome to our second lesson on working with algebraic fractions. Today we're going to be adding and subtracting with algebraic fractions. We're going to begin with some numerical examples and then we'll move on to more complicated examples later. So we begin with one half add two thirds. So to add these two fractions together, we need a common denominator which is the lowest common multiple of the two and the three. In this case, it is six. So to make one half equivalent to something of, of a six, we need to multiply it by three. And to make two thirds equivalent to something of a six, we need to multiply that by two. So we have one times three, which is three, and two times two, which is four. We're gonna add them together, so in total, we've got seven, six. Do you want to try question B by pausing the video and unpause it when you've finished? Okay, question B. We have three fifths plus one third. So the common denominator now is going to be 15 because 15 is the lowest common multiple of five and three. So we're going to multiply this fraction by 3 and we're going to multiply this fraction by 5. So 3 times 3 is 9 and 1 times 5 is 5. And we add them together and we get 14 fifteenths. Again, feel free to pause the video, try question C. So question C, we have 1 and 1 half added to 1 fifth. So one and one half, I'm going to convert into a type of diffraction, which is three over two, plus one fifth. The lowest common multiple of two and five is 10, which means we need to multiply this fraction by five because two times five makes 10. We're going to multiply this fraction by two. So again, we have a denominator of 10. Three times five is 15, and one times two is two. So in total, we have 17 over 10. You could also have written one and seven tenths. Okay, so let's recap adding fractions with different denominators. Let's move on now to algebraic fractions. So the method is exactly the same. We need a common denominator. So we have two over x plus three over 2x. And the common denominator would be the lowest common multiple of x and 2x, which in this case is 2x. Because x goes into 2x twice. So we'll multiply this fraction by 2. 2 times 2 makes 4. And we already have a denominator of 2x here. So in total, we've got 7 over 2x. Do you want to try question B by pausing the video and then we'll go through that in a second when you're ready. Okay, so we have a over c minus a over c plus t. So we'll multiply this fraction by c plus t, which means we have a lots of c plus t. over c, lots of c plus t, minus, and we'll multiply this fraction by the c. So we have ac over c lots of c plus t. And you can see that c lots of c plus t is the lowest common multiple of these two denominators. So we'll expand the brackets out. We have AC plus 2A over C squared plus 2C minus AC over C squared plus 2C. Now we can simplify the numerator by doing AC take away the AC to make zero. So we have 2A over c squared plus 2c. 
Okay, for question C, we have 3 over x minus 1 minus 1 over x plus 1. So we're going to have a common denominator by multiplying both terms by the opposite denominator. So in this fraction, multiply by this denominator and this fraction multiplied by this denominator. So we have three lots of x plus 1, this term times this term, over x minus 1, lots of x plus 1. When we expand these out, we have x squared plus x minus 3x minus 1. These x terms will cancel, so we're left with x squared minus 1. And now we'll do this fraction. So 1 times this is x minus 1 over x squared minus 1. So we'll expand this bracket out here. We have 3x plus 3 over x squared minus 1 minus the x minus 1. And it's a subtraction of all of this bracket, not just the x. So we have 3x plus 3 minus the x plus the 1 all over x squared minus 1 which is, so we have 3x minus x, which is 2x, and the 3 out of a 1, which is 4, all over x squared minus 1. Okay, so now you can try some questions for yourself. Work through the questions at your own pace, and when you're ready, just unpause the video. So for question A, we have 1 over f plus 2 over 3f. The lowest common multiple of both denominators is 3f. So we need to multiply this one by 3. So 1 times 3 is 3. And we don't need to multiply this fraction. So we'll leave that as 2 over 3f. So we have 5 over 3f. For question B, we have w over x minus 1 over y. So we'll multiply this one by y and this one by x. And that will give you the common denominator of x, y. w times the y is w, y. And the 1 times the x is x. So we have w, y minus x over xy. So for question C, we have 2 over a plus c minus 5 over a minus c. And the common denominator will be this denominator multiplied by this denominator. So times that by a minus c. And times this one by a plus c. So we have 2 multiplied by a minus c minus the 5 times a plus c all over the common denominator of a plus c lots of a minus c. And we can work this out over here. We have a squared minus AC plus AC minus C squared. And you can see that these two will cancel. So we're left with A squared minus C squared. So we can expand these two brackets out now. We have 2A minus 2C. The negative 5 times the A, which is negative 5A, and the negative 5 times c, which is negative 5c, all over what we just worked out, a squared minus c squared. 
we can collect the like terms. 2a minus 5a is minus 3a. And negative 2c minus 5c is negative 7c. All over a squared minus c squared. So have a try at question D and then we can go through that. Think carefully about the w squared minus 1 because this contains two brackets. So for question D, if we think about w squared minus 1 and we can factorise this into two brackets, we've got w squared plus no w terms minus 1. Well, two numbers that multiply to make negative 1 are negative 1 and positive 1. So what we actually have is w minus 1 and w plus 1. And this is convenient because w plus 1 is a denominator here. So what we have to do is 2 over w squared minus 1 plus 3 over w plus 1. All we have to do is multiply this fraction by w minus 1. So now we have a common denominator and we can expand this bracket out. So we have 2 plus 3w minus 3 over w squared minus 1. So we have 3w minus 1, which is 2 take away 3 over w squared minus 1. Okay, there's one last question for you to do, which is a challenge. We're going to apply what we've learned to work out the perimeter of this shape. Now, before you get started, the perimeter is the distance around the entire edge. But we don't need to work out all the edges. We only need to work out these two. Because if we can work out these two, we can double this result. So if you want to try and work out that and pause the video. Okay, so we have 1 over x plus 3 plus 3 over x plus 2. So I'm just adding together this length and this length. We'll use the common denominator, multiply this one by x plus 2 and this one by x plus 3. So we have x plus 2 over x plus 3 lots of x plus 2 plus 3 lots of x plus 3 over x plus 2 lots of x plus 3. So we'll work out the common denominator over here. We have x plus 3 lots of x plus 2 which is x squared plus 2x plus the 3x plus the 6. So we have x squared plus 5x plus 6. And that is our common denominator. So our numerator is x plus 2 plus the 3x plus 9. So that is x add 3x, which is 4x, 2 add 9, which is 11, over x squared plus 5x plus 6. But like I said earlier, this is only two other lengths, so we need to double it. So we have 2 lots of 4x plus 11 over x squared plus 5x plus 6 and that is in centimetres. Thank you for watching, I do hope you found that useful and next lesson we'll do some work on multiplying with algebraic fractions. Thank you and take care.